we learned about the Indus Valley civilization and uh, one of the most prominent civilization in the history of uh, you know the world uh, which happened uh, to be in uh, India so that was the early India where Afghanistan Pakistan Bangladesh were all part of India right so back then uh, it was a huge land uh, which was called India and there flew a river called Indus this river now exists in the east pakistan on this river indus on the tributaries of this river came to life a civilization which is called the indus valley civilization which had two prominent cities under it harappa and mohenjo-daro following happened in the course of time when humans started living in communities they started having a code uh you know a, a code a rule book which protected the community people and there came the vedic civilization that's where hinduism also was born in india post which what happened was a lot of different rulers from across the world started invading india in different ways so we had the persians and the greeks who first started coming to india for trading right back then trading was barter system so we used to exchange goods for goods for example if i wanted a kilo of rice then i used to give a uh, one kilo of sugar in exchange of one kilo of rice so the trading system came into practice we had the money system that came into practice and a lot of other things so with these things what happened these humans started thinking that there should be a ruler a ruler who could rule this particular community right from that thought of being a leader of the community and taking care of the community came the concept of kingdom and first such kingdom in the history of india was the magadha empire right the magadha empire there were two famous rulers uh, from that empire which belonged to maurya dynasty chandragupta maurya and ashoka they were the two uh, you know pillars of the dynasty and they were one of the prominent uh, you know uh, rulers of that dynasty so uh, from there came uh, the people uh, like uh, sorry there came a religion like hinduism jainism and buddhism through that spread we had a lot of other kingdoms then like satavahanas that we discussed yesterday uh and the end we discussed about the huns who invaded india and now today we are going to learn about what happened after the huns invaded india right that was a quick recap so the so late middle kingdoms looks something like this we had this this bit of india where in the south also kingdoms started flourishing and we had cholas and cheras who were uh, you know uh, which were the different dynasties which ruled the south bit of india then we had the rajputs in the north who took care of the northern part of india so in the south cholas and cheras in the north we had the rajputs we are going to learn in detail about all of them okay so what happens after the huns come to india when they come to india as i told yesterday Gupta dynasty was there and there was a prominent ruler called the Skanda Gupta so Skanda Gupta fought the Huns but he he could not win so they invaded the complete northern part of india but when he started coming down south the uh, rulers of chola dynasty and other south rulers never let them come to the south and they had a very protected area so you know they found, uh, the huns started a fight in south of india and they could never enter this property so back then chola dynasty ruled the south india and this was one of the most most famous dynasty ever so uh, what did they do where was this dynasty set up so this dynasty as i told you always that all the human settlements were always on the banks of the river why on the banks of the river because there was water there was land 
there was all the natural resources that human needs for his existence right so that's where even chola dynasty came and this was found in the fertile valley of kaveri river so now you know where kaveri is right it's in between karnataka and tamil nadu so that's on the banks of that river came up this big dynasty uh there were very famous rulers from this dynasty and this the territory of this one in, you know had the island of maldives right uh, and it stretched up to the ganges so such a huge uh, thing think about it like from south tip of india you were moving right towards the ganges such a huge dynasty and you're covering all the islands on the right hand side of the maldives and everything so one famous ruler of this dynasty was rajendra chola uh, he was one amazing ruler because he got in place tax system he got the whole economic and cultural uh, you know stability of the uh, the province uh, you know uh, really well because he came up with a lot of code of rules and everything so rajendra chola was one of the famous ruler of this dynasty so here in i'm just showcasing few things from the dynasty the coins these were the early silver coins from uh, the chola dynasty this one is the raja raja chola uh, father of rajendra chola one of the again most famous ruler of the dynasty and uh, the tanjavur temple that you see now the brihadeshwara temple was built by this particular dynasty back in 13th century uh, i think maybe somewhere in the 11th century when they were ruling so all these kings ruled india for like 300 years 400 years such such huge reign they had in india right so this particular temple was also built uh, during their reign so this was about cholas in the south moving ahead we are going to learn about the harsha empire So remember, I told you the Guptas were defeated in the battle with Huns. So the whole Gupta kingdom came to crash, and then rose when another king called Harshvardhana. He was not from Gupta Empire. He belonged to the Pushyabhuti uh, clan, and uh, it was uh, and his dynasty was called the Vardhana dynasty. Okay. he was one of the most prominent rulers of india he uh, he's called harshvardhana he was one of the most most popular rulers in india so uh, what he did uh, there's a small story which goes here so he had a sister uh, who married to a local ruler there near you know uh, near kanauj and uh, because that ruler was very greedy he wanted a part of their kingdom so his brother harshvardhana's brother went and fought that ruler he said we we are not going to give you this particular land and in that fight that ruler murdered harshvardhana's brother and at that time harshvardhana was just 16 years old okay so to take revenge of his brother and to prove to the world that a small a uh, kid can also become a great ruler harshvardhana came to power at the age of 16 and then he went and he acquired kanauj and thanesar which is in haryana and the whole uh, you know kingdom till there the, you know you can actually think that it was about the half of north india that he went and he captured and then he slowly started coming down and he started you know even uh started to taking control over bengal bihar and odisha so he was such a powerful leader and then what happened and then once he uh he was a great art and architecture lover so during his reign there was a lot of uh, things you know with respect to art and architecture built he was a great dancer he had thorough interest in everything related to art and he was also a great scholar right he knew about a lot of different aspects though he was a small kid when he came to power but he he was immensely intelligent he knew about taxation finance 
he knew about how to keep his own country happy and how to go about conquering and expanding his kingdom so due to that time there was a international scholar huen sang who visited india so back then a lot of scholars visited india and you know our indian scholars visited abroad to just to check uh, what sort of the ruler uh, you know exists there what do they do under their kingship what do they do how how are their uh, you know people over there how are they treating their people so during that time huen sang one of the most prominent in uh, you know international scholar visited india and he has written so many books about his visit to india and he mentions in those books about harshvardhana and his empire and he's also mentioned that this person harshvardhana was so generous he believed in justice he never did anything which was unjust to his people in fact if you know about nalanda university one of the most uh, old university of india i think one of the first universities in india was nalanda university so harshvardhana contributed a lot to uh, to nalanda university and he was in favor of education art and architecture and he encouraged everyone in his kingdom to do something which belonged to this field unfortunately he uh, died at the age of 41 and just in matter of time like just in 41 years he had set up an example to the whole world about ruling and power and how with power you can create such great impact so with his uh, death the whole empire was disintegrated and then there were a lot of other rulers who came in place of this empire right Here in you can see a small snippet of uh, which we got hold of, which is the autograph of uh, King Harshavardhana. Right, uh, this is how they used to write before. So I thought that'll be interesting for you guys to see. Now moving on, what happened after Harshavardhana's death? There were different kingdoms that flourished. Okay, there were Prat Pratiharas, Palas, and Rashtrakutas. The Pratiharas uh, were from Rajasthan and northern India so they basically uh, covered uh, that belt Rajasthan and you know Punjab and Haryana and that whole northern belt where uh, Harshavardhana actually came from and after his death these people rose to power and they captured that belt from 6th to 11th century so you know for about 400 to 500 years uh, Pratiharas ruled the northern India then we had the Palas The Palas belonged to the eastern part of India, the Bengal side of India, and they had a great rule for about 300 to 400 years uh, in that belt. So they basically covered the Bihar, Jharkhand, West Bengal a uh, bit, uh, you know, during this period. And then we have the Rashtrakutas who belonged to the Southern Empire. So after the Cholas, uh, you know, reign ended, there. then rashtrakutas rose to power and they started uh, you know ruling uh, the south of india during this period and after that we uh, you know uh, for about 200 years we had them as the rulers of southern india so next we are going to learn about the famous rajputs so when the pratiharas came to uh you know uh, when the pratiharas rule started ending then arose the rules uh, rule of rajputs so what happened actually i told you in my first class that vedic civilization happened in india which divided uh, the people on basis of their occupation into four different categories the first one was brahmins the second one was kshatriyas the third one vaishyas and the fourth one shudras so brahmins used to take care of temples they were priests and they they used to preach the second category kshatriyas they were warriors the third category vaishyas they were business people traders right and then you have the fourth category which was shudras and shudras were the administrative workers right so rajputs 
originally belonged to the Kshatriya group, the Hindu uh, clan of Kshatriya. So there were so many Rajputs. They were inborn warriors, the royal warriors of India, and there were so many famous dynasty which came under this particular, uh, you know, clan. which were shahan dynasty solanki dynasty and all famous rulers uh back then so what rajputs did when they came to power they divided themselves into 36 different clans and these were divided on base uh you know on the basis of three things when a suryavanshi so all the suryavanshis rajput called themselves as the descendants of sun god right then we had the chandravanshis so all the rajputs who belong to chandravanshi clan call themselves as descendants of moon god and the third one were the agnivanshi all the descendants of the agnivanshi clan uh call them agni right so all the rajputs were divided into these three different categories and basis these three different categories 36 different uh, clans or family names or family dynasties cities appeared like the solankis and the chauhans basis suryavanshi chandravanshi and agnivanshi that they divided themselves into so one of the most famous royal warrior of all time in india was the prithviraj chauhan i don't know if you guys have heard of prithviraj chauhan but he belonged to the chauhan dynasty and he was one of the famous ruler in india uh prithviraj chauhan's reign uh was not you know that huge but the contribution that he made to india was immense immense uh, and immense and he held uh, his horse and can somebody tell me what was his horse's name now and after the rajput period we had in india the similar time we had one of the most most glorious empire vijayanagara empire Vijayanagara Empire was the richest empire ever. They had gold and silver sold on streets. None of their houses were locked ever. So the the most famous ruler of this uh, particular empire. Does anybody know who is the most famous ruler of this empire? Right, Krishna Devaraya. Krishna Devaraya was one of the most prominent ruler of this dynasty, and he was an art art lover. He danced. He sang he encouraged all sort of art forms in his empire there was so much that he built and he believed in justice and he believed in a lot of other things and one such concern that he always had was safety so his kingdom was so safe that none of the people in his kingdom ever actually locked their houses they slept in open houses they were not scared of thieves coming and robbing them up so such were uh, you know the great work of krishna devaraya the king and you know his kingdom was so glorious that everything uh, everything in everything was in gold and silver name it i mean people used to eat in gold and silver plates everything was gold and silver that such a glorious empire it was they created something uh, during that time which was so different like they had a natural fort uh, in vijayanagar so this particular natural fort which is built under a rock in a cave they just carved inside inside and they created a big fort just out of a rock so uh, such were the great works during which in agar empire and that happened so moving on uh, after which in agar empire what happened something huge came in india and that was the islamic invasion so the whole uh, you know all the rulers of this particular uh, duration ruled india for more than 1000 years at least uh, with different different rulers so we had the mughal empire we had the uh, genghis khan we had the turks the afghans everyone coming to india and ruling it in another way and we had about uh, you know uh, had so many rulers from their bed who came and who actually changed a lot of philosophies in india India originally had uh, a lot of Hinduism, right? All the empires that I discussed before were Hindus, so we did not we did not have Muslim invasion before. When they started coming uh, to us, you know, uh, uh, through uh, the Afghanistan bit, and you know, actually one of 
different way so uh, they were considered to be very raw raw humans because uh, they never cared about anything else right they were really really uh, they were called heartless these real rulers were heartless because they did a lot of violence they believed in violence they just believed in expansion with violence and with all the violence that they did uh, their spread in india increased so a lot of dynasties back then in india fought them hard uh, like the rajputs in the north fought all the mughal empires there were great stories of maharana pratap and and the delhi sultanate uh, that you know we we can some day discuss about these things and then in south a lot of other rulers fought them but eventually right uh, they they started settling in india and in a way that they never never went back and they left all their lasting influences on us so culturally and otherwise also we had their influence so you know about taj mahal right so it was built by one of the mughal empire too so um we're not going to speak about the most prominent dynasty under the islamic sultanate and that is the mughal empire right we're going to speak about the mughal empire so the founder of this empire was babur okay the these people were from turks and mongolia so all the khans that you know about are originally from mongolia okay so uh, from mongolia they came to india um, you know uh, they were from turkey and mongolia and they came to india and babur started this dynasty called the mughal empire and you had few great rulers from this uh, dynasty like humayun akbar shah jahan so you know about humayun uh, and they started settling uh, all the settlements in uh, delhi because delhi was the central bit for them and they started settling down in delhi and they because these guys were also the art lovers they had a very different choice when it came to art they believed in marvelous big building they believed in creating uh, you know uh, buildings which were out of the world so you think about taj mahal then you talk about the humayun tomb everything was just so different and what they ran what they actually started doing was they started converting a lot of hindus into muslims right uh, because they believed in violence and they believed in keeping up their empire huge and big so un- until and un- unless they didn't have a lot of people under their control they they couldn't rule so because of the simple logic they started around they started going around and uh, capturing hindu women in rajasthan so then came a time where all the hindu women the rajputs started uh, you know practicing parda system what is a parda system they asked their women not to come out of the houses and if at all they come out of the houses they should cover their face they should cover their face with a piece of cloth with a veil so because of that what happened a parda system came into practice because uh mughal empire all the rulers of this empire were so violent that uh, they used to come on their horses and just capture the women who sitting there on the street and take take her away with them and then marry them so a lot of uh, to control all this parda system came and they started expanding in india with all the violence because they, they knew all the ways of capturing india they were there in india up to 1858 until the time even uh, you know during british period also their reign continued and continued and we have some great stuff from that empire uh, you know that they, they have also given to india a lot of art and architecture and a lot of different choices uh, you know with respect to art and architecture so you have uh, you know you have these sort of paintings uh about you know babur who visited indian temples and then you have shah jahan and then uh, you know they, they had do uh, you, you know dhaka which is the capital of bangladesh so uh, obviously they rule existed there so we had things from there then you have bulandarwaza so everything which is very different was created by this dynasty so the last bit today that we are going to study about is another important dynasty before the colonial era that we have to learn about is the kingdom of mysore so uh, mughal started uh, you know slowly slowly captivating the whole of india and there was a part in india on the southern part where hyder ali 
came and uh, there, there was one dynasty called the Wodeyars. The Wodeyars were the famous uh, people in uh, the southern part of India. In fact, uh, the southern part was actually called Mysore back then. The whole bit of southern was called Mysore. So in Mysore was the famous dynasty called uh, the Wodeyar dynasty. They were again a very rich dynasty, had amazing uh, palaces and uh, they, they basically believed in creating a lot of uh, palatial things and uh, they were the ones who got uh, you know uh, different things to India. So Sir C. V. Raman, uh, if you know about him, the uh, you know dwell and scientist uh, was then promoted by uh, the Wodeyar uh, from uh, you know the Tipu reign and the Wodeyar kingdom as well. So uh, all great works uh, started happening here, and this was one of the most uh, famous dynasty. And this dynasty came to end after Hyder Ali and his son Tipu Sultan fought the Wodeyar rulers, and they came to power. Right, and during Tipu Sultan's reign, a lot of other developments were seen in India in the southern bit. Uh, you had a lot of dams built, you had electricity first coming to India, and a lot of other developments happened.